Hi, today we will talk about Color Blocks, a game for Commodore 64 written in assembly language. For Commodore 6510 CPU, I use Kick Assembler compiler and Sublime IDE for development environment. There are no real graphics in game, just Petsky characters, and there are no sprites also, or any other fancy assembly technique. So let's talk about the game concept and how to play the game itself. There are colorful blocks falling from the top of the screen to the bottom, and you can use joystick to guide the block left or right while it's falling. You need to fill the entire row with blocks to gain points, and when that happens, blocks in that row disappear, similar to Tetris, and all other blocks above it fall down. You score the point and the game continues on. And here is the catch. When the blocks of the same colors are touched on landing, they disappear. This simple rule makes it difficult to fill the entire row with blocks. So you need to combine each following block to be a different color in a row. To compensate for this, you can change the color of the block while it's falling with the fire button on the joystick. Like I said, there is no sprites or any other fancy techniques, and there is a reason for this. So at the beginning it was not in intended to be a game at all, so it was intended to be something like a screensaver where we have falling blocks, uh, filling out the screen and with no inputs from the player and that's it. The block starts falling from the top of the screen with some random X position and with some random color and they fall down stacking on, on top of each other and gradually fill the screen. This was all great but what will happen if they fill the entire screen? So I need something to make uh, things a little bit more interesting so I came up with this kind of disappearing cancelling block strategy. So if the blocks of the same color touch each other, they are cancelled. This rule is uh, checked when block is settled down on the ground or another block. This added some complexity to the project because I needed to handle all the remaining blocks that could be left in the air if the block below them disappear. So, to make it easier to testing um, all possible combinations, I, I, I added the joystick control to, to on falling blocks. That means that I can move a block left or right while it's falling down. So, when I build all that into the project, it was looking a bit more like a game than the screensaver. So, I need some goal. And this is where the fill entire row concept came to be. Something similar to Tetris. And now you can understand why this game doesn't use uh, sprites and other techniques. Um, simply, it shouldn't be game at all in the first place. These are all variables that I use for block position on the screen and color position in the memory. This is where we set up the intro screen. The random X position for the block is generated here um, alongside the initial color. And this is the main loop of the game, where block Y position is decrementing and the block is redrawn on the screen. Here is also where joystick controls are, ca are captured. This part of the code takes care of the left movement of the block on the screen. And this one take care of the right movement. Also, we have the fire button on the joystick, which switch over the colors while the block is falling down. This part of the code take care of redrawing falling block on the screen. The animation is divided into two parts, and the reason why I will explain a little bit later.
this big block of bytes is our intro screen. It just fill all the bytes in, in, into the memory. Uh, this is not a very efficient way to do it, but I don't care. And this block of bytes is custom character set uh, that is used in the game. And this is absolutely great online Petsky editor where you can create custom characters, sprites and build screen. It's a very very helpful site and I highly recommend. This is character table where I created all the blocks in the, used in the game and blocks with smile faces, block dividing two or more characters and I will explain it in just a minute. Here we will create a new screen and choose our custom character table so we can make some tests. Now let me explain what happens when block is falling down on the screen. Because I use columns and rows to display characters on the screen, there is a big leap between previous and next Y position of the block. So when you animate that, uh, it doesn't look very good, it doesn't look smooth at all, it's all jumpy. So to minimize this effect, I use two characters with half of the block in each, and when you place them on top of each other, you get like in between position, between two roads. So it's like third position, and it looks a bit more smoother, a little bit more beautiful. It will be easier to see what I mean when I show the grid on the screen. The same technique is used for left and right movement of the block, but this time it's a bit more complex, so I have to use four characters to display like in between position. So in each of these four positions there is one quarter of the block uh, displayed and when, they, when you combine them together they form one block. So this is the part of the code that does the left movement animation. So we are in the B position and our next position is C. A and D are temporary positions, but still we need to check all of them if they are empty and not taken by the other blocks. The same thing is done for the right movement, but this time we are in A position going to D and B and C are just temporary positions. At the end there are some parts of the code that I'm not pleased with, but overall it was fun to build this game in assembly language. I think that, that the next step will be to transform falling block to sprite and see will it make animation more nicer. Thank you for watching and goodbye.